Hello everyone, and welcome to part 3 of how to make Pong in Unity. The last time, we got our ball moving around the screen, and there's an interesting thing where if you're moving your bat while the ball is moving, it'll go get kicked off in whatever direction you're moving. The way we're going to fix this is go to our ball material and just set the friction to zero. And now, it won't be able to bounce in whatever direction. And the reason we change this is so the we want the ball to bounce based on the direct part of the bat that you hit. And now we can resume getting our ball to move how we want it to. So back in our code, we created this distance value to find the um, distance between the block or the ball and the bat and what I want to do is just have two different distance values one for the first bat and one for the other bat okay. and what I'm gonna say is an if statement for when you collide with bat 1 and an if statement for when you collide with bat 2 and inside these if statements we're going to modify the velocity component to make it move the opposite direction at a y velocity based on the distance from the center of the bat. So I'm just going to set one to negative 5 and the other to positive 5. And this would be hitting the right one, which would be bat 2. And here I'm just going to write hit, which is the name of our collider or our on collision enter game object hit object dot name equals equals bat one and we also say that for bat two code compiled and now I'm just going to put in this distance number for these y vector components and now that should get it moving based on the bats position so hitting the center should mean it goes straight oh that's a problem that is a very big problem now what would be causing that? Oh I see, I got these backwards. It needs to be positive when you hit bat 1 because we want it to move right, and negative 5 when we hit bat 2 because we want it to move left. Now it should be bouncing between. Good. Good. And doing this should make it move up. Alright, now I want it to move steeper up. So I'm just going to multiply this by a magnitude of 2, and I guess we'll do some tweaking over time until we get the right kind of movement. So now we have our bat move, or our ball bouncing between these two bats, but we need to make it so it won't fly off to the top or bottom of the screen. So the way we can do that is pretty easy with col more colliders. And what I'm going to do is put the, an empty game object at the top of the screen, which I can find out by basing it off the position of the camera. Yeah, it appears to be at 5. I'm just going to add a box collider and change its size in the X component until it's big enough to go across the entirety of the screen. I'll just name this top and create another one for the bottom and place this one y equals negative 5 so there it is we now have our ball bouncing between our uh, bats I still don't like how it's moving maybe it needs to travel a bit faster at 8f 
But once again, we'll tweak it as we go on. The last thing we need to do to get our ball moving properly is to make it so it resets to the center after it has gone off screen. The off screen is about, let's just say, x equals 12. What we want to do is when our ball goes 12 units away from the center of the screen, have it reset to the to the center and then choose whether to go right or left. It's actually a pretty simple way of doing it. We are going to check if the absolute value of this dot transform dot position dot x is greater than or equal to 12. Oh, 12. And what this does is convert our transform.position.x to a positive value and just compares those values. And if it's greater than 12, we will just run this in order to change its velocity. We will also need to warp it back to 0, 0. And that will be done with another transform.position. Only this time, the transform.position needs to equal a new vector 3 at 0, 0, 0. And this just returns it to the center of the screen. Oh, math does not adhere to current context. And that's because it's math F not math. Right. So now we have our ball bouncing. Come on. And it gets reset to the center. And I do like that speed. Alright. But to really test how good this game will be playing, we have to be able to move our second bat. So what I'm going to do is just copy and paste the script. Actually, yeah, I will copy and paste the code in the script and create a new script for here. Let's name it bat2 move control. Open the script. And all I need to do is just copy all this code and change the key combinations. Did not open. There it is. So key code dot up arrow and down arrow. So now we can control both bats at once which is really good for testing purposes. So yeah. And another thing about this script is this is basically how our two-player mode is going to work. However, our game is still pretty far from finished. We still need to have a score up here it's not centered at zero? Huh. Interesting. Oh well. We still need to have some sort of scoreboard, and I want to make it so the ball waits for a second instead of just shooting out immediately. And we're going to need to do something with sound, and I wouldn't mind having like an AI controlled level where we just use a script in order to control how the bat moves around. Anyway, that wraps it up for this episode. Next time we are going to create a scoreboard to keep track of which player is winning and which player is losing. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.